Good morning, all. And as you can see, once again, I am bested by technology. Um, I have a very rudimentary, <laughs> very rudimentary understanding of all of this, um, and this is why I use Zoom because I can do so much with it. But just because we're bested by technology doesn't mean that we can't uh, still get together and figure out another way to make it happen. Um, so we're going to go ahead like I did the last time I recorded it and put it up afterwards. So I met David 12 months ago when I was in the UK uh, at a men's immersion with Ankush Jane. Uh, and Ankush had said that he was inviting uh, a, 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 I'd say a young man to, to come and talk with us and share us, uh, with, with his, his, his life story. And... I don't think you were long with a prison at that stage, were you, David? Were you, you know, or I won uh, a few months. A few months. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. yeah, just just to be clear on that. But the um, so when David came, when David came to speak, he somewhat stunned us with his elegance, you know, and the depth of. Of his, of his story, of his transformation. Now, before we roll out into it, I, I and I will confess, and I said it last night, I was deeply moved by the whole story of the before and after, but where he is in his life now, you know, is, is, is a beautiful experience. And he has agreed to come on and he's agreed to share the story with us uh, in this very human way with its ups and downs. Um, but before we go any further, David, thank you so much for coming, buddy. I really, really, really appreciate it uh, and taking the time to share your story and your patience on my complete technical melt <laughs> meltdown. <laughs> yeah. But before we go any further, David, will you just introduce yourself, please? Can I just start by saying thank you for letting me bring you part of this? I see the postcard there, and they're all very moving. And yeah, you're a, a great man. I really. Thank you, David. Feel Thank you, the love shines from you from your post and seeing you in person. But, um, what was the question? Sorry, what was I doing? Just, just <laughs> well, would say before we go, you know, I just right, okay. just to introduce yourself uh, and right. and just let's let's progress from there. You know, let, let's see yeah. what goes up for the conversation then. Yeah, um, no, so Saunders, I've like a lot of men, male, not male, but uh, I grew up very insecure, very low self-worth, a lot of mental health issues mm. which led to addiction and crime and that circle of life. I just come to believe that that was my life. I didn't think that I could ever be anything apart from a criminal, really. That's all I ever knew. And that's all I ever really wanted because I didn't, like I said, I didn't think I could do anything else. You know, I spent out of, well, I'm 39 years of age, and I think I've spent getting on for 18 or 19 years of that in prison. So, um, and all that. But my life is just, it's, it's hard to put in words where my life was then now you know if you can imagine I, I wouldn't spend too much time talking about the past but obviously mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I have to kind of say a bit of the past to understand how amazing my life is now mm -hmm. yeah like I said I'm, I'm sure everyone that's watching this has gone through that insecurities and mental health or one form or another or addiction or that, but mine was was extreme to me because it was my thinking. But ten days of my life, my baby died of cot death on my chest. For that ten days, I was drinking, taking drugs. I I felt numb. You know, I was drinking what was a southern comfort, and it was doing nothing to me. It's like it was that stuff. Like I just I was just dead inside. For so ten days, I was just robbing drug dealers, doing, doing drugs, just stupid things walking past there i'd like anything to just try and keep myself <laughs> alive i suppose or yeah. just, uh, 
We also think 10 days later, there was an altercation outside my name's house. Someone hit my girlfriend, so I hit them once. That's on a Monday. He fell over, hit his head and died. On the Tuesday, I woke up, my girlfriend was dead next to me. She killed herself, sorry, killing me. On the Wednesday, it was my 23rd birthday, I got charged with murder. On the Thursday, I went to prison. And on the Friday, I went to my baby's funeral. Even that was such a horrible, obviously it was a horrible experience going to anyone's funeral but my babies because I was on from being released from prison. So I'd like, I was handcuffed, then I was handcuffed to a prison officer. There was like, I don't know, five, six prison officers there and we turned up in a big prison van. It was just so unpersonal and it was just, yeah, it was well, not pleasant. And my way of dealing with it was drugs which has always been my coping mechanism. If I was down, I'd do an upper. If I was too up, I'd do a down one. Yeah, I just use drugs as a tool. You know, so for years, I got ended up getting arrested for something else. One of the drug dealers that I've robbed, I got arrested for that. And I ended up getting seven years imprisonment for both things and murder, got dropped to manslaughter because it was unintentional. So, uh, you know, mental health problems just got worse. At first, I didn't want to talk about my problems, and that so I built up in my head that men don't talk about their problems. This silly belief that I think, not just me, I think most men actually do have, don't they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're a man, you don't talk about like, your thoughts and your feelings, you just bottle it up and get on with it, kind of. So I had that mentality, and to be fair, I wanted to be dead. Like I, I want. I literally was suicidal pretty much every day. But I wouldn't actually do that and put my family through. My mum and my nan and like well, that's my family. I wouldn't actually put them through. And to be fair, I think I was probably quite scared of it. <laughs> actually going through with it. To be honest, I'm just deep. So I just carried on, and I said to God, like with me. I think a lot of my mental health problems come from my actual insecurity because I felt so insecure about being in a prison environment. And, you know, I had all these people that I had upset previously, drug dealers that I had robbed and people I ripped off and whatnot. And then all of a sudden I'm in prison with a lot of these people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my baby just died. All this was going on. So I was really depressed and to start fighting. And, and, that sort of thing was the last thing that I wanted to do. I just wanted to curl up literally on my bed and just die or just be, just be left alone. But you can't do that. So then you have to start putting a front on. And my insecurities led me to think, well, it's like a fight. Like literally, I couldn't, I couldn't run away. So I had to fight. And it just, I just prevent, not prevention, like attack the best form of defense. So I just, got into that mindset is well, wait you're going to do something for me I'm going to do it to you and then the more the worse I get is kind of a warning to everyone else don't mess with me because I'm going to do this and over the years it just got to extremes you know I become someone that I didn't like I didn't want to be but I didn't think that I could change so I started off with a seven-year sentence, so I actually ended up serving like 14 years. Uh, continuously, you uh, well, were in prison? Well, I, I should have served uh, three and a half years with parole, but I didn't. I ended up, well, not getting my parole because of my behaviour. Hmm. So I ended up serving five years, two months out of the seven years, and should have finished the rest on licence. But I was actually out for about three months, just over three months, I think. And then I got recalled to prison with more fines. Because that's the thing, when I got uh, got released from prison, it was going to my baby's grave for the, the first time and my partners in it. Was, I still had all these mental health issues. I actually had PTSD, but I was wrongly diagnosed. And me being the person I was, I didn't, I kind of bottled it up and I hid it from my family and friends and that sort of stuff. So I was going on with all this stuff and, I think for a lot of people, it's just like, oh, he's just gone back to what he 
his old self is not changed, it's just that. But for me, it was like, I didn't need to know why I used to do a lot of stuff. I used to just repeat the same things and definition of insanity is repeating the same things, expecting a different outcome. Like, but I didn't know that until this understanding. I was just like, oh, I'm back in the police station again. What happened here? Or I've ruined this or I've done this or hurt this person unintentionally. But I didn't understand it. So I was out for like three months. I come, went back into prison. I should have served a, a year. Then I got in another year on top, another year on top. And I lost. Just getting extra time added up on when I got released. I was out for, I think, four months, just over. Went to rob another drug dealer. Same thing. Got police chased. Then my friend died. I had a car crash. My friend died in the car next to me. And so I got recalled back to prison. And so then I had all that on top of everything else that was going on yeah. mentally. And I was only diagnosed with PTSD. I think I was actually kicked out of nine different prisons for my behavior for the fighting drugs and phones. Wow. And so it's like, it's, I've had every kind of diagnosis there is, from, apart from the actual one that I actually had. Like reactive depression didn't clinically depressed bipolar. So I had all these different labels on labels and and every time you get a new label you think, Oh, is this it? And but it wasn't. So it's like nine lots of doctors, nine lots of healthy like the whole system you, when you go through, it's like I've told so it's not just nine doctors, there's nine counsellors, nine psychiatrists, like there's not so many different people. Yeah. And I think teams it's of people like that. Yeah. yeah, and it's just it got to the stage where it's like my story hasn't changed and it's just I accepted that that was my life. My life was going to be a living hell. It was literally my life was going to be prison. That is that is it. If I ever got released again, it was going to be I'm going to get out, I'm going to rob this dealer, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. It's all about money. It was about making the <laughs> most, all the ego, mm. lifestyle in that. Like lifestyle when I was out till I come back to prison, then but I still carry on in prison, Billy. That's the thing, just because I was in prison didn't mean that I was not going to stop doing drugs and yeah, and and that was just a change of environment, not a change of lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That. Like I still, and even then, I still didn't just want drugs, I always wanted to have the best drugs and I wanted to have the best phone. I just didn't want a little phone, I wanted to, you know, it's all the ego, which is ego and insecurity, one and the same. Mm. Like, so it's li literally all that and it was basically I was in my local prison and I just got a girl, well, my partner at the time she got caught bringing drugs in so it was under police investigation I was in the segregation unit uh, under police investigation of drugs and I was fighting with the prison officers and literally one morning just like I got into an indication that I was trying to run into myself to try and get my drugs and my drugs out. And my wife's been like, I'd rather fight you than give me a drug. Because my wife, for my drugs for my mm. comfort blanket or my, well, drugs are so, I just, <laughs> my everything, really, that was my life. So, but, I don't know, it's very extreme, but I, I had him a prison officer by the throat. He had me by the throat and trying to fight another one and trying to get my drugs and like all this sort of stuff going on. And afterwards, a prison officer coming to myself, female, Miss Sinnell. I owe her so much, and I have so much gratitude for her. But she's coming to myself and said, David, like, what is going on for you? Like, what is your problem? So I, I told her, I just told her, like I've said so many times to so many different people, and she said, it sounds like you've got PTSD. I'd never heard of it, so she explained that it's what a lot of soldiers get, in, like flashbacks, and within a couple of weeks, I was tested. For it, then a couple, a couple of weeks later, after that, I started a treatment for it, which stopped the flashback side of it. But by this stage, it had been going on for seven years, I guess. Mm. At this stage, I, I was physically scared to go to bed at night because I knew when I go to bed, I'm going to wake up having flashbacks to my baby and like all this bad stuff. So I was scared to go to bed. So. Just before, but in case anybody is wondering uh, about the flashbacks of the baby, just 
and we won't stay around the story for the but but just for the sake of understanding it, David had the baby at the time in his arms when the baby passed. Oh, no. oh yes, so yeah, my baby died. Just to be clear with that, so that's oh. that would have been oh, yeah. the source of we'll say at that stage, yeah. right? Would have been recognized as the source of oh. the PTSD. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. Um yeah, so I wake up in the middle of the night and I think I could hear my baby crying. So I say like oh, daddy's gonna make your bottle kind of get up turn the light on and I'm in a prison cell then it would all come flashing back and it was like yeah so it got to the stage where I'd take I was taking all sorts of drugs up to get to sleep I was buying like antipsychotic drugs and I was taking pills I, I didn't care what it was if you told me something would help me sleep I would take it I take things that knock me out for 14 hours 16 hours yeah. for me yeah. it was like I wake up and just but it was better than <laughs> having them flashbacks. So the next, I suppose, five years, boy, uh, yeah, five, about five years, I guess, it was just the same. Kicked them out of one prison to the other, violent, violent, more violent. And I did, ha I did have a couple of good periods. Don't get me wrong, like I, I got into the gym and that I used the gym as my coping mechanism help me out and because it's all external mm -hmm. everything is external mm -hmm. like everything i thought was external to make me happy so that was all fine then i had a fight and broke my hand and can go back to the gym then it kind of made my depression even worse because i had that bit of feeling good and feeling good about myself because it was to be fair but i was a quitter quit at everything every job i've ever had every relationship everything my insecurities got to a stage where I, think, I don't want this. I'm not, I don't want this or I can't take it. It's the same as I was saying that when I had good points in my life, like one day I remember literally waking up and thinking, wow, my life's really good. It's woke up and like looking over and I was in prison, the sun was out and I felt really good. And it's like, I, I forgot that I didn't feel real, like depression or anything like that. I, like, I just felt really good. And it's like, my life's good. It's like, hold on. Something bad's gonna happen. What's gonna happen? Yeah. Oh, let me be prepared. Something's around the corner. And yet again, it was like, that's a sod it button. And before you know it, I've got another phone. I'm smoking weed, and the weed leads to something else and something else. And then you're getting things thrown over the wall and getting kicked out of the prison. And, you know, it, it was it's a, a cycle. Definition of insanity, repeating the same thing, expecting different things. Over and over, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know that. All I know is, like, hold on, I'm, I'm getting attacked by the staff, I'm attacking the staff, and I'm, I'm the one that's sitting there beating up in a cell. and uh, Cycle all the time. Yeah, cycle all the time. And it literally, I got kicked out of one prison for really hurting someone over a Rizla Billy. I, got, I can see it through, I can see a Rizla on the side. And it wasn't about the Rizla, it was the fact I asked someone for a Rizla and I didn't like the way his ego, I didn't like the way that he spoke to me. And so then I attacked him and I put him in hospital over a Rizla. You know, so I got kicked out of that prison, went to another prison. I, uh, I was in the prison a few weeks, still carried on the same thing, got caught within a month or two. Well, I didn't actually get caught, but on, visit, uh, on a visit yeah. to the drugs. But I, I was fighting the prison staff to keep the drugs. And um, the drugs workers come to see me, and I was, I was on drugs as a high. And you get to know the system, you get to know what to say. And the worst thing, if you want to get out there, and the worst thing to start doing is start arguing with them. So I know just that, yes, miss, I'll do this, do that. And you get out there and quicker. So I just said to her, miss, put me down for every course there is. If I get something, I'll get something. If I don't, I don't. I've got nothing to lose. By this time, I'll probably get on, done for getting on for 40 courses all their addiction courses, all their behavioural courses. Like, I've, I've done it all multiple times and none of it ever worked for me. And still none of it worked, which is right. the, the very telling thing. Mm, yeah, it's, it's, uh, so I didn't understand him. But, um, yeah, so a, a couple of weeks later, it was, uh, I got a thing saying I was going to be on recovery. I not think nothing of it. For me, it was just another group that was going to go and waste my time. <laughs> and they're all it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boxes ticked for getting out. Yeah. 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 Get out of the cell for a couple of hours, get to see some other people on a different wing and see what deals can be done. You know, it's, um, mm -hmm. I went there in the first group and 
oh, really, what can I say? Like, <laughs> I sit and I'm thinking, these lots are nuts. I know that I'm bad. Right, these yeah. lots are silly. I'm live. Sorry, David, can you hold? Yeah. 